What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Well, it's Oldsmobile time again, and I've got my old club jacket on here from the early 1990s when I was a member of the British Columbia Oldsmobile Club. I wonder if those guys are still around, or any Oldsmobile Club in British Columbia is still around. I don't know. I should uh, actually look into that. But the reason why I'm wearing my good old club jacket is because we are going to be looking at Ravel's 1971 Olds 442 W30. Now, a lot of the guys in the Oldsmobile Club had these cars. I actually have one of these. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and check out this amazing Ravel 1971 Oldsmobile 442 W30. 1971, and Oldsmobile is in its second year of the amazing redesign for the 1971 Oldsmobile 442 Cutlass. Dr. Olds has brewed up another amazing machine right here. And what we have is this wonderful kit by Ravel. And here we get a front three-quarter view as well as the rear three-quarter view. So what made this car different from the 1970 is that instead of the tongue going up with the hood and hitting the mechanics in the head, which I've seen actually happen, they at Oldsmobile have engineered this so that now it's a plastic piece in here and up under the headlights and the hood releases down below and as the hood opens up of course the tongue is not sitting in the air which was a potential head injury waiting to happen. So what makes the 442 really unique is a custom hood with the Ram Air scoops up here for the Ram Air induction, as well as these really cool countersunk type hood hinges, or sorry, hood pins. And out back, they had a spoiler mounted onto the back trunk lid. And the other part is the taillights. Instead of going horizontal, they're now going vertical. So this is a skill level five kit, of course from Ravella, Germany, for ages 13 and up in 125th scale. Now looking at this side of the box, we have a built up version of the kit with a lot of underneath details, chassis details. So here we have the front three quarter view of the kit and the rear three quarter view. The model has this amazing white striping as well as the rally wheels now up underneath, we can see the entire undercarriage here with the exhaust pipes, the gas tank in the back, the rear axle, the front axles, and the engine. And then up here, we've got another close-up. It's almost the same picture. I don't know why Ravel did this. What, what are we supposed to be seeing here? Would have been nice to have an interior shot. But at any rate, there's underneath the hood, and this one has the red inner fenders. These were supposed to be fiberglass, and they were supposed to be lighter than the black ones. But I don't really know how much of that is true, or if this was just a stylized thing. Also, Pontiac had this in some of their GTOs. Now, out in the back, we have the package shelf up here. You can see through the window, as well as the spoiler and that amazing chrome bumper. And on this side of the box, we have some of the features, like the length of the model being 8 inches, 8 by 1875. So that's actually 8 and 3 sixteenths. Number of parts is 139, molded in white, and we have water slide decals. And down here we have the write-up for the 442, which I will copy down and put into the description below this video. We also have the detailed Olds Rocket 455 cubic inch V8, optional spoiler, and molded in white with clear and chrome parts. And over here we also have the paint color callouts that you will need. And these are actually referencing Ravel Germany paint colors, just in case you need to know that. So now let's take the lid off this amazing model kit and see what we have inside. A little bit tight right there. So right away we get this amazing instruction sheet with our Olds 442 in side profile view. And what do we have inside the instructions? Well, that would be the decal sheet. And I'm going to flip this over at the end of the video just so that it's a surprise. Here we've got a bag containing our glass clear components. We also have the wonderful Oldsmobile body. 
And Ravel decided to throw the tires up inside there. And these look like the old traditional tires again on that parts tree. And we'll have to clip them off and clip off the parts or the little, you know, sprue extensions or whatever. Now here we have the first bag of our white plastic components, including the chassis and the hood. And then we've got a second bag down here, which is the interior components. And it looks like you get a choice of consoles in the center. So we will check that out as well as the redesign for 1970 dashboard and our interior again looking really cool down here we have our chrome components a lot of neat stuff i recognize that bumper oh wow that bumper actually has the cutlass 442 grills inside sorry i thought they were like my cutlass s but they're they're not quite and so that's our stuff in the box. So I will clear this out of the way and then we'll take a look at our instruction sheet. Here we have the front page of our Ravel 71 Olds 442 W30 instructions. And here you can see the side view of a real Olds 442 and it sure looks wonderful. And then we have our write-ups here in both English, French and German. So again, very universal and a really good instruction sheet. The really cool thing about this model is you have a choice between building it either automatic or manual. So the automatic counts as the letter A with a triangle, and the manual is letter B, although this would have been cool if it was an M in here for manual. And what we have is the automatic right here with the left and right hand side of the automatic transmission with the transmission pan up underneath. And if you want the manual, it's only two pieces, but you can see the shift linkage on the side. So once you decide which transmission you want to use, you can then glue your engine block halves together down here and slip that transmission on at the bottom. So let's just move this up and over a little bit. Panel 2 shows the rest of the engine going together with our cylinder heads and the valve covers being glued in place. And then up here we've got this little component. I'm not quite sure what it is just yet. It actually looks like a fuel pump. Now I don't have the big block old so I'm not really 100% sure there but there's our starter motor going in place and then our oil pan up from underneath. Panel 3 shows our oil filter being glued onto the right hand side of the engine block and then in panel 4 we have our components being glued in place so here we have our four barrel carburetor as well as the intake manifold. Here's our coil there's the distributor and our right and left hand side exhaust manifolds. Panel 5 shows the rest of our engine going together with our timing chain cover and the oil filler spout right here, which will glue on the front of the engine. Then we have an alternator, our power steering pump, and I do believe this is an air conditioning unit over here. And then we've got our fan, our fan belts and pulleys, and then the clutch on the front of our fan. And all this will glue together up onto the front of the engine. Panel 6, 7, 8, and 9 refer to our interior. And this really does look like my 72 out in the backyard, except I've got the bench seats in there. So what we have is building the buckets twice, so two fronts to two backs. And then in panel 7, again, we get back into our automatic or the manual. And here we have the center console for the automatic, which is a different part number from the one for the manual transmission. Now getting into panel 8, here you've got your optional uh, center console which will glue into the center on the transmission tunnel hump. And we've got our inner fenders molded in with the floor pan and the rear bench seat as well as the package shelf up above. And then our bucket seats will glue into place in between the center console. There is a lot of decals that are going on in these uh, diagrams here. So in panel 9 we have both left and right hand side interior panels and it's showing decal placements in here and here which would be the wood grain and we also have our little lights and we've got our armrests with the uh, door release handle as well as our window winder down here. Again really looks like my real car sitting in the backyard. Carrying on with our interior, again, we have either the manual pedals or the automatic ones. Remember what your choice was, so don't get them uh, <laughs> wrong pedals in the wrong place. And here we've got our separate side molded interiors being glued onto that floor pan. Then down below we have the very famous 
1970 to 1972 Oldsmobile dashboard with the three gauges up here right in front of the driver and we have all the paint going on here as well as our decals with the asterisks so these are your different gauges and the wood panel in behind and then once you get that done you get your steering column here and glue it in the hole and then glue your rally steering wheel onto the end panel 12 shows our firewall here and this is our master cylinder with the brake booster you glue those two together and then here we've got our windshield wiper blade motor, which will glue up into this area. And there's our Bendix brake master cylinder unit going in right here, just like it should. Then we get to mount that wonderful firewall right down in here, just behind the wheel aprons. Now remember, these would be painted red for the W30s, or you could paint them black as a black plastic inners. If you wanted, you know, to not build this as a W40, there's our battery being glued down in place here. And then our completed dashboard goes into these slots back here, right where that door panel edge is. And then you'd have your wonderful interior for your 442. So now let's turn our car over and start working on the chassis and undercarriage here. So in step 14 and 15, that's what we're going to begin. Step 14 shows the placement for either the automatic or the manual. And here we're talking about the engine mounting bracket. So this brace will go back here for the automatic. And I do believe it comes up a little bit for the manual in these holes. It's sort of hard to see what they're referring to in here. So when we take a look at the plastic parts, we will know better. Now in panel 15, we have the exhaust system being glued into place. You'll also paint your fuel tank here. And we have the steering box with the console going up into the car. Now this is going to meet up on that firewall toward the bottom. And then on the inside, of course, it'll be suggested that it's going up and through and under the dashboard. In panel 16, we see our amazing Oldsmobile 455 engine being glued into the chassis on the engine mounts. So you've got two right in here, right between the upper A-arms. And then wherever you put that center brace, it should match up on the pin on the back of the transmission. So there is a little bit of an idea between step 14 here. And that is to leave that center brace off. But bring your engine down and mount it in here first, and then see where that pin is on the transmission, and then put your brace up there in where that pin, where it's going to meet the pin here and the two holes on the chassis there. Now panel 17 shows our rear axle going into place. And here again, it looks like you get a choice of which end, differential end you're going to get. So it says parts 66 and 67 are to be used for the factory W27 performance option. Okay, cool. So the W27, we're going to have to look that one up later. But uh, that would be maybe 411 gears or something. So you do have your choice of back covers for your differential. Now that could be uh, quite useful to keep one of these for a future differential on a different model kit so that you could choose which combination you wanted there. Of course, another GM, right? Might even work with the AMT69 olds. Not too sure on that. Anyway, here are the control arms up top with the brace in molded in place. And then down below, we also have this little U-shaped bracket, which goes underneath the differential. And uh, yeah, the differential comes with the springs molded in place as well. Panel 18 shows our rear axle assembly being glued into the chassis. And then here we have our drive shaft with the two universals at each end. Remember, one of them goes into the engine first, and then the second one will go into the differential. And you're going to, you know, sort of like massage this thing in into the back here. And then once that's all into place, you can glue on your shock absorbers into the back. Now for panel 19, this is where it really looks like an Oldsmobile. And this is where Ravel really gets some good points with me. So you have your radiator support here, and it also has the little holes in there for your four headlights. Here is the back of the radiator, which you glue in there. And then we have our fan shroud up here, so you don't get your fingers cut when you're reaching in if the engine is going. In panel 20, we start to work on our body. 
And what it's showing here is the chrome going up underneath the windshield. And uh, there's the cowl. Now the cowl gets hidden by the hood in these years, just to make the car look sleeker. So here we've got our window glass being glued in place. These are sun visors and you've got your rear view mirror. And then we have that nice, wonderful old rear glass. Now on my car outside, I was doing some flooring in my shed and I'm using uh, laminated flooring. And I was able to make a uh, kind of a, <laughs> like how the tank treads move, you know, I laid a whole bunch of those boards and had them actually into the curve of that rear window. And that is just to protect that glass from hail that we get out in Alberta, as well as snow and the sun, because I did burn my package shelf because of the way this thing is shaped. It worked like a gigantic magnifying glass. Anyway, so when we've got the car upside down, you'll see that the roof actually has the headliner molded in, which is really cool. And here it's saying to open up these back holes. That's for the spoiler. If you don't want the spoiler, don't open the holes. And then there's our side marker lights, red in the back, orange, amber in the front. Again, really just like my real olds out in the backyard. Step 21 is showing our completed radiator support being glued in in the front of the car. And here is that pan. This is where the hood latches into. And on mine right now, it's rusted shut. So I got to figure out a way to get this open with the front, the whole front of Fasaya glued in place. That's going to, or actually bolted in place on the real car, and no way to get at those bolts. So that's going to be a real interesting challenge for me. So now here is our undercarriage with the interior, and this is going in. It's not the chassis just yet, but it's all those components, the inner wheel aprons, of course, and all this will fit in in step 22. In panel 23, we see the chassis being dropped into the car, and this will cover up the floor pan and in the back window area and all the rest and look really wonderful. Step 24 shows our lower radiator hose being glued in place. Now you want to put this end on the bottom of the water pump and this end into the bottom of the radiator on the right hand side. Panel 25 shows the front suspension clip going in place. So we have our upper A arms and our tie rod as well as the front brace. And then the springs will glue up into little holes underneath. And this entire unit will glue into these holes on the bottom of the car. Panel 26 shows our wonderful rally wheels being assembled. So here you need to paint inside this area. And once that's all done, then you can move your wheel down here. And there's your tire. So push the wheel into the tire. And then remember your little pins here into the wheel backs. Now, you don't want to glue in here because you're just going to glue the little pin once you get it into the holes here on our suspension. So again, be very careful not to use the glue. In fact, here it's, it kind of shows like not to use glue at all. So maybe this is a tight form-fitting thing with the pins. Now, my recommendation would actually be to get these wheel backs with the pins and put them on first. Uh, maybe even push them into the tire, but don't put the wheel on yet. Put the wheel on last. So basically, you want this pin to be seated nicely in here and nice and tight in this hole on the end of the pin. So in order to do that, of course, you're going to be pushing your thumb or finger into this area here in order to do that. And if the wheel is in place, that might make this pin, you know, back out when you're trying to push it in. So basically, I would recommend doing this portion of it first into there and there, you know, you're making four of those, and then finish it off by pushing the wheel into place. Next up, we're going to build the front of the car. So here we have our quad headlights, and they're all being glued into place. Paint your grills in there. Now, uh, Pete would say to open these up. So you might want to take a look at his video on how to do that, and then get your knife out and scrape the backs of these things. Now, here we also have a little parking light up there, which also acts as a turn signal light. And right in the center, this looks like our license plate being glued down below. And then there is the plastic piece that goes in the middle. Now, this is actually plastic on the real car. 
And there are some plastic bits around the grills. The grills themselves are plastic. I know because I uh, accidentally drove into somebody's bumper twice in my life with this. These bumpers are not designed for impact, they're designed for show. And I hit dead center here and it pushed it up, broke all this up, and busted all these grills on me. So I know exactly how the bumper gets damaged and what it does, and all of this basically is plastic except for the headlight bezels, which are sort of a stainless or an aluminum. Anyway, there's our completed grill being glued in. Now you're going to scrape the paint off just in this little area here and inside, on the inside of course, and off the edge here and a little bit on the top, and that will, with the glue, hold that in place really nicely. And here we have this little hose, which is part of our air conditioning, and that will go on where all these little dots are being shown. So it kind of looks like it's bridging between here and here. Panel 30 shows the rear assembly of our 442. And what we have here are the tailpipe tip extensions, which glue on the ends of the tailpipes. We also have our rear tail lamps, which go into the back of that bumper and then our license plate. Now, if you want to fill up one of these with gas, the gas filler is underneath the license plate. It folds down that way in a curve, basically so that you can get your gas in. I love this car when it was uh, at the gas pumps because it didn't matter which side of the gas pump you were on, you could always get gas right in the center of your car. Now, here's the special W30 rear spoiler. There's the little brackets for it, as well as the spoiler. And remember, drilling out those holes, this is where it would end up going. Step 31 shows our special two-part Ram Air air cleaner being installed. So the top goes into the ring down here, and that's our air inlet right there. And then down here, I do believe this, again, is part of that air conditioning system. And that would glue, looks like this end is going into the firewall. And I do believe this end also hooks up with the other part of that pipe from step number 29. Panel 32 shows our special W30 hood being assembled. So this is the one with the Ram Air scoops on it. And here we have our hood pins or twist latches, really. And they glue into these holes. And then you have your hinges on either side. They're not showing the other side, of course, for clarity. And then here in step 33, we see the hood being installed onto the front of the car. Here we see in panel 34, our side mirrors being glued in place. And these are two part mirrors, as you can see. So you've got your housing as well as the chrome lens and those all glue in place. And then down below, we have our door handles for left and right hand side. And it is nice that they do these separately because when they're molded, they look like one piece and you've got to drill it out right in there. So it's always nice not to do that. And I'm not sure what this is. This almost looks like a tachometer. But again, that's one of those W30 features that I don't have on my car. So I have no idea what that is. Might even be something for, you know, testing the speed of this thing or something like that. So again, if somebody knows what that is, let us know. It's an optional piece too. So again, really cool stuff. On the back, we have the decal location as well as the blueprinted style drawings of our Oldsmobile. So here we have the front of the car, the rear of the car, the top looking down, and the side view. And it shows you where all the stripes go as well as the license plate and the W30 emblems. Next up, we have our wonderful plastic body here. And again, this is really wonderful. It's got the entire support up front here, as well as our cowl, windshield wipers, and the back wonderful window here. So here is the body, and again, really excellent. Looks just like mine in the backyard. A little bit soft here on the door panels. You know, that line that shows where the door is. It does look kind of soft to me anyway. But what can you say? I got a couple of little scratches in here, a little bit of flash around. There are mold marks. There is a sunken area, and I do believe that might be for a dome light. Uh, up top, we've got indentations for the sun visors, which is interesting. And then some mold marks down below, the little holes there, so you can uh, drill. Again, though, really nice. Just like my real car, only smaller. Again, take a look at that. Great stuff. Hood latch and the top of the radiator. 
Next up, we have our two parts trees here for our interior. Now this is the interior as well as those front splash aprons. And we have our seat backs here as well as the door panels and our seat fronts down below. So taking a look at the door panels and seats, again, very nicely detailed. This is totally accurate to the W30. I've known a few guys in the club that have these. It even has a little button in the back of the seat right there. You push that to tilt the seat forward. So again, excellent work from Ravel. Now taking a look at this component, we also have the beautiful seats. I've got the back seats are like this on pretty much all the cutlasses, I do believe. And uh, again, really cool, excellent work. Windshield wiper bottle as well as the charcoal canister are right there which was one of those emissions things back in the day. Very smooth underneath, some mold marks, but really nothing to worry about. Again, really excellent stuff. Here we have four parts trees. Our first one has our dashboard, steering wheel column for the steering column, center consoles for both automatic and manual, as well as the pedals. And then over here we've got our rear spoiler. We have the sun visors. And we've got a convertible boot because there is a convertible version of this kit as well. And there's our side mirrors. Not too sure what these are. I also think there might be one with some really huge, like, 22-inch chrome wheels. Because these wheel backs here look massive. And these little rings, I think, are supposed to be glued into the center. I'm not sure. But here's our stock ones, anyway. And then we've got our radiator and the fan shroud as well as the battery and our firewall and the radiator support and here is that steering gearbox and again all this stuff looks really good so let's just bring some of this up to the camera really quick and take a look again nice detail into the radiator on the back some mold marks but these will get covered in here again really great stuff there's the convertible boot if you've got an extra Oldsmobile you want to cut the top off of. Actually, it has to be a Cutlass Supreme, not uh, the Fastback. But again, overall, good stuff. Dashboard looks accurate to mine. Even has that little vent up top and the big glove box door. Really neat on the center consoles. Again, there's our pedals. Now I've got the automatic outside. And it even has the emergency brake pedal in there. So again, really accurate from Ravel. And then looking at this, you've got those wheel backs and this little square piece. Not sure what that is. But overall, all these parts are really excellent. Once you glue it all together, your model will look terrific. So I tried to get all these parts trees into this shot. Now what we have here is the W30 hood as well as the hood hinges. And these have a long taper on the end so it can actually open in your model with the hood, hood hinges glued in place. And then here we've got parts of our engine. So there's our intake manifold, the bottom of the air cleaner, the top of the air cleaner. You also get this additional air cleaner which might have been from a different issue of this kit. Then you've got your exhaust manifolds, in, you've cylinder heads right here, as well as the valve covers. And then we've got all our engine details, like the fan belts. That's the uh, air conditioner there. And then we've got our fan and the brake cylinder, our bracket for the air conditioner, water pump, the hose, our distributor, and all these other little goodies in here. Then the cross brace and our rear arms, as well as the shock absorbers and the U-shape that goes underneath the differential. Here's the different covers, and this one has fins on it, which is pretty cool. You've got springs and our drive shaft. Flipping over here is the suspension. Oh, there's actually two different rear axles in this. Okay, that's amazing. Now we can actually use one of these in another model, a complete axle, not just the back cover. So again, really cool stuff. There's the front suspension, and then we've got our engine block halves with those transmissions. So quickly, I'll bring a couple of these up. Again, you can see just the nice detail under here. I've got to go a little bit fast today. I'm running out of memory. I <laughs> don't want to erase my memory card. Again, really cool. Yeah, erase it just to film one section and have them in two different spots. Again, you can see that fitting on there on the valve cover, or the differential cover. Woo! Uh, again, really cool stuff on here. 
And uh, look at that, it's even got the Olds logo right on the center of the air cleaner. These things drop down when you push the gas pedal uh, at a certain speed. And it has a little cable in here with a spring to bring it all back once you take your foot off the gas. And then there's under or the hood itself, and underneath you've got the wonderful cross bracing, mold marks in the four corners, but again, nothing you can't deal with. Here we have our chassis, as well as our mufflers and exhaust system. Again, really cool looking stuff. So these are basically straightforward. A couple little pins on the back just to locate them into all the pins and holes on the chassis. But again, if I were able to get under the olds and show you up above, uh, this is what it would look like if you were lying on the ground and the car rolled over top of you. Again, really wonderful stuff. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Sounds painful. But again, really a wonderful work in here. And from the top down, again, excellent. Some mold marks in here you might have to deal with just to get that engine in. But overall, again, Ravel is just knocking it out of the park with this one. As a member of the Oldsmobile Club, I give it my seal of approval. Here we have our chrome parts tree, and you'll notice that there's like a big missing section in here. What I think it was is, remember I said there were some really huge wheelbacks? I think this is where all those, what do they call them, donk-a-donk -donk wheels went? Something like that. I think they, they must have made a donk-a-donk, -donk lowrider, bouncy-bounce car version. Anyway, here's our rear bumper. There's the front bumper, and again, looking really awesome. I did try to make one of these using the old Johan 70 Olds. It was a lot of work, and it didn't look good in the end because I wasn't as skilled as I am now. Uh, but it is nice that somebody actually made this year of Olds and the 72. We also have our wheels here and our license plates, as well as the exhaust tips, and then the door handles and the mirrors and all that other cool stuff. So take a look at this up close. Again, really excellent work. I guess if Pete were to uh, get rid of this backing here and just have the open grill, you'd basically be best off just to cut these wide open and then glue the mesh in behind. But again, overall, I mean, this looks really good. Excellent. I just wish I had my tail lamps in here instead of the 71s because I don't think the 72 is on the market right now but uh, hopefully eventually it will. Next up we have our glass components and these are really nicely done. The only thing is the tail light should be molded in red but you can easily paint them with a Tamiya clear red acrylic or even testers stoplight red. We have our four quad headlights as well as the little lights that go up underneath on that bumper in those holes and there's our rear window as well as the front. The only thing missing is the heater defroster on the back of the rear window. But other than that, this looks really good. And just quickly take a look at those tail lamps. That's the 70 version, but I sure wish I could have got the 1972. One thing that is cool is I thought these little pins in the wheels were actually plastic, but here they are as being metal. So this will really help in the wheels so that you don't accidentally glue them in place plastic to plastic. You have a chance because it's plastic to metal. Here we have the tires for our 71 Olds 442W30. And these are very generic. They don't have any names on the tires and they are molded on the rubber parts trees. So again, you'll have to cut off the end and the end and then put this in your tire spinner and just sand down the treads. The only cool part with these tires is the treads themselves. Again, nice, amazing work. There's a seam line around the tires, so sanding will get rid of that. But again, as you can see, there is nothing there on the tread or the sidewall, pardon me because there are some surprise decals at the end, which we'll take a look at, and you can just apply them onto the tire. And then I think with a little bit of dull coat, it'll hold that decal in place. I've never actually used the decals on the tires. So if you guys know, let us know in the comments down below. So here we have the decal sheet and now here's the big reveal. I'm move the paper out of here. So what we have is our choice between either an Alaska car or an Ontario car for you Canadians out there like myself, although I'd prefer Alberta plates. The Ontario version says old 442 and the Alaska version is just 67201. Now what we have is a choice of stripes. You either have the black stripe or the white stripe. We also have some Dr. Oldsmobile decals here with the 
the doctor and his uh, crossed flags and thumbs up. Now this little stripe goes on the trunk lid and that's going up around the rear taillights. And it's nice that Ravel actually gives you a doubles of these because they are very thin. Here we, this looks like an air cleaner decal. And then there's all that wood grain for the dashboard and the interior. We also have Firestone wide oval scripts. So if you want tires that are not Goodyear, you can always save these and use them on something else or on the old itself. 442 emblems. And we've got the rocket right there. We also have our hood stripes in white and black. And then our gauge faces and items for the battery and alternator and all the other cool stuff. So again, a really nice looking decal sheet. And I can't wait to put it on my car. I can actually use these to make two different Oldsmobiles as well. White stripe and black. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video or we got to see the Ravel 1971 Olds 442 W30. And I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my old 1972 Oldsmobile Cutlass S. Now, unfortunately, I can't open the hood on that car because it has rusted shut on me. I got to figure out how to get up underneath the bumper here and that nose piece to get at the hinge. That's going to be a real cool challenge that I really don't want to do. Anyway, enough of that. If you enjoy these videos, please consider becoming a member to our YouTube channel. All you got to do is look down on like your PC or whatever, and there's a button that says joined. Just take your mouse and click on that. That'll be really cool. You can become a member and find out all the details and see if it's right for you. If you don't want to become a member, it would be awesome if you just would subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that like button so that this video gets spread out to more model car fanatics like all of us. Now, if you want to see another great video of an Oldsmobile, check it out right up here by clicking this video here. And if you want to get some new model kits for your model car garage, check out our online store by clicking this quick link here, or just visit us in person at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.